Shut up and sit down. Hello everyone, I am the Cyber Rave Guru. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to do a series of videos here on um, using combination of different programs to create a custom cutting board. And I'm going to start with, uh, there's actually going to be multiple parts to this. Uh, I'm going to show you two different techniques to make um, the actual outline for the cutting board itself and then bring it into the CAM program show you how to do all the tool, tool paths and then ultimately cut it out, assemble it. So three, four parts to this video, something like this. So first off, we're gonna start off with uh, technique number one uh, for creating the uh, 2D outline that we're gonna use in the CAM program. So I started off by uh, searching on Google for a picture that I liked uh, for the purposes that I'm going to use this for. And so I found um, a picture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a wine and cheese cutting board. So uh, the first one is gonna be an action image uh, that I found on Google. We're gonna outline it um, using Inkscape. And then the second part, it's a cheese. Um, didn't really find any um, actual pictures that I liked. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and try and make one. Um, so it's gonna be an experiment if nothing else. Uh, okay, so let's uh, flip over here to um, Inkscape. What you see in front of you is the picture. This is a, you know, a wine glass. It's fairly straightforward. Um, it's a JPEG. You can see that by the file name up here. Uh, it's actually quite low resolution. Um, the image is uh, 236 by 244. So uh, when you zoom in, you can see you get a lot of uh, pixelation. So not sure how this is gonna go. Well, we'll see, but I'll show you the technique. Uh, and you can certainly apply this technique to any image. So. Uh, all right, let's get into it. So right off the bat, um, we're going to start with uh, in Inkscape. It's called a Trace Bitmap. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to bring up this little window. There's a couple different options. We'll talk about those in a minute. But what it's going to do is it's going to trace this bitmap and turn it into a vector graphic that we can then turn around into a DXF file and then import it into the CAM program and then turn it into G-code. Uh, yes, very complicated if you're familiar with CNC. Um, that's just the way that it works. So typically um, in this window here with a black and white image I usually use brightness cutoff um, or edge detection. Uh, given the low resolution of this particular image um, edge detection might not work very well. Uh, if you have a color, a full color image, color quantization might work pretty well. Uh, but in this case I'm gonna give it a go um, with brightness cutoff. We'll see what happens. I'm going to increase the threshold. I like uh, something around 650. It seems to work pretty well. Now over here, speckles. Uh, suppress, uh, suppress speckles. Uh, probably going to need to do that with this, given the, the lower resolution and smoothing and optimizing. Optimization here, I usually turn this up to about 1.0. Um, I'll be 100% honest with you. I have no clue what these values mean. I just know that what has worked for me in the past. Um, we'll leave the speckle at 2 right now, see what happens. Um, and then you click this little live preview button and you can kind of see in the window what it looks like. Now, that looks um, pretty jagged, but I, what I will tell you is these preview windows, not so um, accurate. <laughs> uh, so it might actually work for our purposes. So let's go ahead and give it a go. So let's click OK. And you can see nothing really looks that different. Uh, but over here, uh, you can see uh, there's now these uh, little arrows which indicates that you have a path. So we'll click the little X box here. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to click. Um, yeah, we got this. Okay, and we're going to slide it over here. So now what you see is there are actually two different images here. Um, there's the original source image, and then there's this vector version of it. Now we know this is vector because if we click on the little node editor here, you can see the um, the actual nodes oops and if we zoom in you can see brilliantly just brilliantly spaced lines here we slide over look at the original image total blur right so this is why we turned it into a vector uh, for multiple reasons and you can see it did a pretty darn good job uh, job here um, it, it was pretty um, pretty jagged in the preview I don't really see that jaggedness here um, in the actual final product. So um, for our purposes, it's going to be perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this guy um, and we're going to call it uh, wine glass 
wine glass dot svg we're going to save it as a source uh, as the inkscape svg we're going to actually uh oops delete this guy we don't need it anymore slide our vector over here a um, couple things real quick i should have done this right off the bat but uh, always change i always change document properties operate in inches um, you can choose millimeters if that's what you're familiar with um, that just allows uh, it to go into the DXF uh, significantly better. Uh, something also to know about Inkscape, um, there's no OK button or anything. When you make changes, it just applies them. Um, so you just kind of click the X button, closes it, and you're good to go. Um, OK, so now we have our wine glass. And what you can see, it's selected. The size here, um, I'll move it around. You can see the X and Y start coordinates, which is here, are changing, and then the size here. So it is. Uh, roughly one inch wide by two inches tall, which is really small from a CNC perspective. Um, it's really uh, two inches tall is uh, the height of my thumb and the width of my thumb. So it's really only about that big. Um, not very big at all. Uh, very, very difficult to mill. Uh, but because now that is a vector, um, we can actually scale it to any size that we want and it'll be perfectly um, uh, identical to the smaller version. All right, uh, so with that, we're not going to uh, scale it right now. I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually do some editing on the on the nodes. My mouse is acting up, by the way, so I apologize for the way that it's zooming. Uh, this base here, um, it, it's rounded. It looks okay. Um, what I will tell you is um, uh, I, I think it looks okay. Um, uh, and in fact, you know what? I'm not going to edit uh, the nodes right now. I think, I think the way it looks is pretty good. Uh, what we have to do actually is scale it. Uh, to the size that we want and um, for this particular case uh, I think I'm gonna shoot for uh, about twice the size uh, about four inches tall um, whoopsie you want to undo that where is my little I think this is what I'm gonna do want to lock that guy do four yeah, there we go so that locks the as aspect ratio that's definitely what I want to do now. Um, again, a little nuance here. Where's my document properties? Um, it set the document to the size of the image uh, originally. It's probably best just go ahead and set it to some paper size um, just for the purposes of what we're doing here. So uh, the reason we wanted to scale it um, is because now that when we get into the actual node editing, um, we're going to actually have to take uh, uh, pay, uh, pay very close attention to the size of some of these um, edges um, and things like these 90 degree edges are simply impossible with a CNC machine um, if you had a laser cutter or something like that uh, that would certainly work um, but not with the CNC machine uh, so that's really the only 90 degree corner that we have so what we want to do right now is we want to create a circle um, and I want to set the width to 0.126. Um, I'm going to check this guy so I can make it symmetrical. I want to check it back. Uh, so 0.126 is um, the size of the circle I use for a uh, quarter inch, um, eighth inch cutting bit. Um, you can see here at four inches tall, that's, that's kind of big. Um, it's going to have a lot of trouble cutting that. So. Uh, let's duplicate it, control D, slide it over here, change it to 063, um, which is a 16th inch cutting bit. And it looks like to me that a 16th inch cutter will do a pretty decent job of cutting out uh, these parts. Yeah. So what are we doing here with this circle? Well, let me tell you. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, the, if you have a round cutting bit and you want to make a round cut and then do an inlay, which is what we're doing, um, I use this as an example right here. Um, if you're cutting into the circle here, the cutter is going to come around and try and follow this edge. And now you can see is the circle is completely covering up the actual image. Uh, so it's going to route out uh, as it tries to contour this edge all this extra space, uh, which means that the pocket is going to be bigger than the actual 
um, inlay piece, which is certainly not something that you want. Uh, so what I do is I create this circle here, and then I go into the node editor, um, and I start sorry, start editing. Come on now. There we go. Um, I start editing the nodes um, to create a more rounded contoured edge uh, that matches the circle. So uh, look, this is a laborious, tedious process. Um, the first time you do it, um, every time you do it. Uh, so I just want to tell you, uh, if you have the opportunity to draw something from scratch at the size you want, that's the way to go. Um, but once you do it a couple times, it actually goes fairly quickly. And so that's just the way it is. So I'm going to plug away at this. Probably uh, uh, I will uh, do a time lapse, but uh, for the final video. So we'll see what happens. So you, I'm going to drag these points in, uh, kind of get them close. Um, double clicking adds a new node, by the way, uh, which allows you to better manipulate things. So I'm going to select all these guys. I'm going to change them into a rounded point structure. Um, that just makes it a heck of a lot easier. What it does is it keeps the angle on the arc. Um, you can see here that uh, these little handles are no longer really germane to the conversation um, for what we're doing. So I'm going to line these guys up. Make them nice and round. Try to follow the contour of the circle as close as we can. Um, one thing to note is we are zoomed in here pretty tight. Um, you have to understand this is only a sixteenth of an inch wide. Um, and so this space here we're talking about, that's like a hundredth, uh, probably actually a couple thousandths of an inch. Um, you don't really think that it makes too much of a difference, I'll be honest with you. It does in the final product. Um, when we actually finish routing it out, um, I'll probably show you some imperfections just from the nature of what we're, uh, the quality of the machine that I have. But um, get it as close as you can. Um, it doesn't have to be highly perfect again, uh, unless you have some professional grade CNC machine, which I do not. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but I I'm an engineer by trade and a little OCD in nature, so um, I try to make it as perfect as I can. So what you can see here is I am moving the circle around the edge here to see are we going to have a nice clean contour when this guy comes in and cuts this. And it looks like um, it looks like we're doing pretty good here. Um, we'll, we'll put this guy here. Now you see here how the circle it touches this edge, but it's a little low right here. So we'll go back into the node editor. We'll pull this guy up just a, just a little bit, give us a little black. Um, and oh, by the way, um, the reason I make these uh, circles different, like high contrast colors, is for that purpose. So you can do a quick uh, visual check. Um, if you made it black, it would just blend in, and then you'd have trouble seeing it. So just mimicking the route of the uh, the router here, uh, the path of the router, um, looks pretty good there. Um, all right, so let's see, where is, I'm going to do this. Uh, all right, so that's that corner. Um, we're going to do this one. Same exact process. We're going to stick the circle in the edge here, and you can see this one's a lot more lopsided. Um, Alright, let's do our little node editor. Let's add some nodes. Boom. Um, you can, if you like, manually edit these nodes um, using the handles. Uh, I find it, uh, for this purpose, it just takes way too long uh, and it's really not worth the outcome. Um, I simply just smooth all of the nodes. Um, I do uh, deselect the last two. Oops, Control Z. I want to deselect the last two nodes because um, you saw what happened there. Actually, if you change the node type, um, it edits the arc of the entire curve. So I leave the last two unselected whenever I change these into uh, circles, um, into a smooth, automatically smooth nodes. So we'll pull these guys down. Um, 
and I added a bunch of extra nodes to allow us to contour better. Um, sometimes fewer is better. Um, if you get into the situation where you just can't quite match it uh, well enough, uh, what I'll tell you is uh, take a couple nodes out and let it figure it out on its own. Um, alternatively, uh, there's a process which is known as uh, you can do a union, uh, take this circle and do a union on the end. Um, that'll give you the size that you need. You don't have to futz around with the node editing. Um, I use that a lot when I got a complicated um, uh, sets of uh, 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 images. Let's see. Um, that I am obviously going to have trouble with trying to match. Uh, sizes and whatnot. Uh, it's just easier to lop off the, uh, the the whatever it is itself and create a whole new thing. So we'll run this up. Looks pretty good. Also, always make sure you're looking at um, the left and the right size sides. Um, so here's a pretty good example where if it's contouring here, you can see it's a little high here. Um, and it's not gonna be able to get this little space here so we'll do a little bit of shaping here uh, pull this node up make it a little bit rounder big deal there um, and again we're talking about thousandths of an inch here um, and you can see this is actually a great example of, uh, I, I actually made it worse. <laughs> it touches right here and we got all this extra space here. So um, I'll pop this guy up a little. And now what you can see is a nice, clean, same amount of space all the way around. Um, that's actually pretty good. All right. Um, that's part number one. Um, it looks like, yeah, we're clean and clear. So... Um, just going to reproduce this process in the bottom left, bottom right, and then also uh, this little corner here. Uh, so I'll tell you what, let's do this corner and then we'll jump to some time lapse. So, oops, let's zoom in here. So we have a nice 90 degree corner here. Um, you can see obviously the router is uh, not going to be able to cut 90 degrees, it's going to cut a round edge. Um, so back to the node editor you can see here this is just a single point so what I do is I create a bunch of points leading up to the edge point I always like to have one right around tangent uh, to the circle which would be this guy um, and put one right here and then put one kind of further out uh, then I'll take all of these nodes I will turn them into auto around uh, this guy probably delete right off the bat. Uh, we'll uh, not delete it right now. We're gonna slide it in and then we'll probably end up deleting these guys. Um, you can see when you delete nodes, it, it uh, doesn't auto smooth. So you see what we did right there. When I said more, uh, less is more. Sometimes that's an example right there. That's a perfect example of how I deleted the nodes and suddenly it just cleaned up that edge and made it super nice and smooth. Um, that is uh, exactly what we were looking for. Um, all right, so let's uh, zoom this guy in a little bit. You can see, so what we're looking for, again, is kind of a constant amount of space all the way around. Um, that'll create a nice, clean edge for the router uh, to come in and clean that up. Um, and so what you're seeing here, let's, I'm going to slide this guy up. All right, so that looks pretty decent. Let's do our little simulated pass. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, that's a little sloppy right there. Um, I think it's worth, I can live with it. Um, nothing a little glue won't fix. to invest in a new mouse I see all right we're good to go all right so we cleaned up that corner uh, pretty straightforward so uh, I'm gonna uh, take a break from the video uh, I'm gonna go fix the other two corners and uh, I'll be right back thanks 
Okay, so we're back. Um, I fixed all the corners. I uh, straightened the bottom edge here, and I also moved the entire image down uh, to align on the zero axis so that when we actually output the DXF file, um, it will be centered on the origin because uh, in this particular example, we're not gonna, uh, we don't really care where um, this image uh, is on the overall picture because we're gonna align uh, the cutter to where we want on the cutting board when we cut it. Um, it's not part of a, a larger design. So um, I, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Um, we're going to continue on with uh, another couple parts. We're going to export this as a DXF. I'll show you the two different techniques I do to do that. Um, also going to uh, bring it into the CAM program and show you how to make some tool pass. And then I'll uh, have one little uh, interlude video showing you different ways to round the edges there. and. Um, also show you making of the other image uh, which is going to be a manual process so i hope you enjoy the videos if you like them please give you uh, give it a thumbs up um, if you don't like them i'd appreciate a thumbs up anyway please subscribe uh, as always uh, have a great evening and uh, we'll see you soon